Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to Deus Ex. Now by now, I'm sure you've noticed that Lady Liberty's head and torch are missing from where they ought to be. Now there was a terrorist attack a while ago, but, but for some reason they haven't repaired the statue. Aha, perfect aim. I gotta make some room here. There it is, my baby. <laughs> now I can use all of these mo weapon mods and clear some more room to get the sawed off shotgun back. I won't need the accuracy mod, it'll eventually get up to 100% on its own. Plus, there are some other weapons that could use it more. In any event, I don't especially need to have the sniper rifle yet because, well, still doing this whole thing non lethal. Be careful, the NSF has set up patchwork security systems here. That means there's a camera somewhere in the neighborhood. The NSF put a commercial grade security bot in this area. You can either avoid its patrol route or, if you're feeling lucky, try and take it out with the EMP grenades or explosives. I wouldn't recommend taking it on with small arms. Like I said in the tutorial, small arms do not work against metallic targets at all. I mean, eventually the sniper rifle can take out cameras. But you need a lot of initial damage just to pull that much off. Oh. Didn't knock him in the head. Yeah, best idea when that happens is just to break line of sight. And make sure you can stay behind them until... It's too late. And that right there is the best feature of the get gun. It's got a lock-on system. You do need to maintain contact for a few seconds before it'll start working, but, well, once that happens. And also, the lock-on is faster the uh, higher your skill gets. And I set that guy a little further away because there's something else I want to blow up to open. There's this little crate in here. I'm kind of out of lockpicks at the moment. And I want me some 30 out 6. Is someone there? Someone heard the explosion, I suppose. Prod doesn't have enough ammunition to be safe. But luckily, the Trank darts. All clear. Haha. <laughs> Good job there, buddy. Way to look all the way around the building. I doubt he's going to get this far. I'm hit! Nope, oh, sure enough. I should probably take care of this guy, too. Just gonna stand there? Well, that's fine with me. Ah. I keep hitting their torsos, but I'm kind of amazed at the number of times I've hit these guys from a distance. Usually not so accurate. Oh, we've seen that one before. To get into the NSF security systems, and... Over this way is just back to UNATCO. And also to that MetBot that I opened up earlier. And you know what else I forgot to do the first time I was around on this side? Paul's got a whole bunch more stuff to say. 
seconds, so we should have a listen to that. You just gonna stay here? There's been some activity at sea. I'm going to watch the coast. Why'd they bring you back to New York? I don't know what they have planned. I messed up an assassination attempt on one of the triad leaders in Hong Kong. Unatco pulled you out. It's a long story. You better head to the statue. Which triad was Unatco targeting? We'll talk about that later. How was your graduation? I want to hear what happened. I wish I could have come. At the time, I could have cared less that Mom and Dad came to mine, but it was a good thing. The UN threw a dinner in honor of me, the first nano-augmented agent. I didn't know that. Guess I must be old news. Dad made a toast. I don't know if you remember his old brown suit. A toast? That doesn't sound like our father. It was hard for him in front of the diplomats, but he savored every moment. Strange how proud he could be when so much was due to... our augmentations. Yes, he was proud. I believe that much. It was nice to have done something for him and Mom. I wish someone could have been there for you. I'm used to being on my own. One can be too self-sufficient, I'm coming to believe. Now that's interesting. It doesn't completely match up with the backstory I gave you in the first video, does it? Well, I can explain, but first there's something else I'd like to show you. Jackass! You know, I hit him in the head enough times, it's pr pretty clear that he's invulnerable. So it's really just a matter of him firing at me until I die. And oh, you can see here that I got hit in the head often enough that my accuracy degraded. Of course, I wasn't looking for him. Best thing is to let the bots handle the ground assault. To use the assault rifle, because I know he's got something better. Yeah, the plasma rifle deals a hell of a lot of damage. Apparently only uses it if you're really up close next to him, though. Oh, well. Plasma rifle is also another heavy weapon. And, like I said, it does a lot of damage, but it takes up a hell of a lot of space. And it's no good against mech targets. And so it's ultimately less useful than the Gep gun. Anyway, yeah, that backstory that he said, it implies that their parents were alive 11 years ago only, and only died after Paul Denton joined Unatco and got his augs at the same time, which means that they would actually have died back when uh, JC was only 11 or 12 instead of 5 or 6. Now, the information I got is from the Deus Ex Bible, which was a work working document. And apparently a few things changed for it between the time they wrote that and the time the game was released. But still, it is backstory you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, so I would say consider the backstory that I gave you to be true until and unless the game itself decides to contradict me. Keep looking. Something funny about that guy. Huh, that was weird. I'm getting pretty lucky with these headshots. The alarm going off would make all the turrets turn on, which is bad news. Anyway, another note I actually wanted to make is that considering what JC very possibly stands for, I'm kind of surprised that his brother is named Paul. Paul isn't really the best name for JC's brother. Like, something better would be Peter, since Peter was contemporary with JC, or even John, since John paved the way. But, uh, Paul, no. Paul came after. He was part of the second generation. I suppose I have to at least show this off for you guys. The PS20 is a plasma bolt in a can. One use only. Only takes up one square. I don't need a 40. Not when water can heal me an infinitesimal amount. But, uh... 
Yeah, I figure I'll fire that thing off at some point, but it's not that awesome. Well, but here's hacking. So, at trained, it takes nearly half the bar, and the bar goes really fast. But, uh, the more hacking we get, the more abilities, the more things we'll be able to turn off, and the longer the timer will last. I think Gunther is being held behind this laser-triggered alarm. If you don't want to set off the alarm, you can either hack the control panel in the doorway, or find a way around. My blueprint of the statue shows a few air shafts. You know, you can actually also explode the, um, the, the, the laser emitters. There are a few ways of doing that. And you might also notice that the, the game tends to sort of iris, thanks to the DirectX 10 mod stuff. Now, I admit it gets a little annoying, but I have to say it's pretty realistic. And get a lockpick back. I may be wondering what use a lockpick is to a laser grid. This security setup is strictly amateur stuff. Keep an eye out for ways to bypass it. These old pre-millennial buildings are riddled with ventilation shafts and maintenance tunnels. And the answer's on the other side of this crawl space. Ah, multi-tool. I guess in case we wanted to go back and do that again, but yes, here... It's where you can use a lockpick, but I only have the one lockpick. I don't want to use it on that door, even if it does bypass the lasers. Now we're here, we got another PS20. And like it says, you can only carry one of them, and this is for that ATM outside. Unfortunately, these boxes are a little too tall. And the chair you cannot use as a stepping stone. And I do not want to go back out to the lasers just to pick up that metal box. Which means it's either the door or the laser grid. Now, like I said, the laser grid can be bypassed or exploded. But you know what else can be exploded? I mean, since we're already here. You know, I would have figured at least one of the guys back here would have hear heard that going off. Oh, but there's Gunther. I swear I heard something. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and another lamb. How oh, nice of them to replace it for us. Uh-oh. Now, I've been hearing that actually shocking a guy in the back is what knocks them out immediately. Wait, quiet! Unfortunately, it can be a little troublesome. Oh, there's another guy. Gunther's in that room, one of our top agents. Yeah, don't worry, I noticed. Looked like I shot him in the head. But no, he had just enough time to hit the damn alarm and alert the damn turret, even though I'm looking at the camera because I thought that went off. No, it's that turret over there. Fortunately, you are invisible to security systems so long as you are interfacing with a computer. Also, I don't know why I hit the icebreaker. I still have the code for this. And this way, I can turn off the turret, too. Oh, newspaper. If you really care, you can just pause the video and read it. I'm not going to bother taking that long. Just for that. I don't really need the pepper spray. Man. Remember when the Unreal Engine could do stuff like real mirrors and swimming? Ah, those were the days. Glad you're not hurt, Agent. 
command should not have left us to be surrounded. Risk is part of the job. I think you lucked out this time. Agent Navarra and I were ready to go in, but for no reasons I said pull back. I do not retreat. Please give me a weapon and move out of the way. As you wish. Take my pistol. That will be adequate. I will secure this level. You proceed up the stairs to the command center at the top. Well, luckily everyone in his way is unconscious already. Plus, uh, interesting note here is that the pistol you give him, the next time you get a pistol back, any weapon mods you attach to it, you'll still have them. So there's no real loss to giving him the pistol, especially since, uh, oh. Yeah, Gunther should be so embarrassed. He could have gotten out of this place any time he wanted to. Uh, anyway, pistols are easy to find, especially among the NSF troopers. In fact, let me just check around here. And... Huh. Guess you can't get pistols out of searched bodies. Unfortunately. I swear it wasn't this dark when I was playing it. I'm gonna have to knock that up a couple notches. Come on, one of you assholes has to have a pistol. Come on. Well, still, I'll find a pistol eventually, and I'm doing this non-lethally anyhow, so... That tunnel leads out onto the exterior of the statue base, and we don't really need to go out there. Did they find the shipment? Yeah, we got- Who's there? I think the law's on us. Ah, damn it. They saw me. Nothing. I guess we're safe. Now I'm gonna have to play through this entire level again just to get this- get these guys to talk. Until then, they found fascist. Us. That's him. Ah, oh, come on. Totally hit him in the head. I'm gonna get this pig. What is up with you people? I'm hit. Ah, there we go. There's my pistol back. No loss. Alright, now let's see that conversation. Did they find the shipment? Yeah, we got the whole supply. You can see the ship's lights crossing the bay. Guess y'all were right. So why aren't we pulling out? Mike's on the horn. Jojo wants a lead on the distribution network. Yeah, we don't have enough men to protect what we've got. That's what Jojo wants. I wonder, how does a guy with a tattooed forehead get to be an NSF colonel? Pardon me, but back in Alabama, we wouldn't let a man who wears earrings plan a military operation. I'd watch what I say about Jojo. He's got a temper. He's a punk and he's gonna get us all killed. The NSF is strong because it represents everyone's interests. Yeah, yeah. Alright, now that that's done, there are a few gas grenades planted on these walls here for me to take out. Gonna save here, so... Yeah, don't worry, I didn't actually set off any of these grenades, I just accidentally stumbled into another conversation upstairs, and I didn't want to have to restart the entire game just to record that again, too. So, that's three free grass gas grenades. Gunther has re-established contact. He says you helped him escape. Good work. Now, the tricky part here is that the people upstairs... Some news, JC. The NSF targeted a shipment of the plague vaccine Ambrosia. We can't locate it. See if the leader will surrender when you reach the command post. We'd like to interrogate him. We'll actually patiently wait for Alex to finish before speaking. Let's get out of here. I'm standing my ground. Someone dripped the alarm downstairs. They're closing in. This is it, Private. We knew it might come to this. What good are we to the NSF if we end up dead? If you NADCO breach the perimeter, then it's already too late. Get ready to fight. 
In case you were wondering, if you don't I trip the alarm, uh oh, huh? take him out. If you don't trip the alarm, they will just say, "We want you to take this one alive and conscious. Find out what you can about the shipment, then turn him over to one of the troopers." They'll just say that the the agents have pulled back. Obviously, something big is going to be coming our way. Hello there. This is the immediate base of the statue here. Don't shoot. I surrender. So you think you know better than FEMA what to do with this month's Ambrosia shipment? You're too late. It's on its way back to the people, and you can't do a damn thing about it. We are doing this non-lethally, so... Tell me about the shipment, and I'll order the troops to pick you up as a prisoner instead of a corpse. Ask away. We already won this round. Where are you taking it? We're just giving ordinary people the same chance to survive as the bureaucrats in Washington. You'll have to unload New York because the choppers would spot you at sea. I think the government made the plague on purpose to get rid of the population growth. Well done. I will pass on your orders to the troopers. Report back to base on the west side of the island. Mission complete. Well, not quite complete. The chief finally let us loose. We were right behind you and cut through them like a hot knife through butter. This guy still has more to say. Just answer the question. Don't believe me? It's all in the numbers. For a hundred years, there's been a conspiracy of plutocrats against ordinary people. You have a single fact to back that up. Number one. In 1945, corporations paid 50% of federal taxes. Now they pay about 5%. Number two. In 1900, 90% of Americans were self-employed. Now it's about 2%. So? It's called consolidation. Strengthen governments and corporations, weaken individuals. With taxes, this can be done imperceptibly over time. You know, back in the day, there were no distinctions between governments and corporations. I guarantee you that the interrogation staff at UNACO will not be as forbearing as I am. Yeah, the secret police. You're just bullies for a completely illegitimate government in Washington. We will locate that shipment one way or another. The entire executive branch is handpicked. 19 of the last 23 U.S. presidents have been members of the Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission is financed by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. Don't tell me. That's a think tank. Anyone can become a member. But not everyone does. That's why they call it the secret government. You can't fight ideas with bullets. Yeah, but you can't fight bullets with ideas. Did you ever ask what it's for? The surveillance? The police? The shoot on sight laws? It's a living. Is that freedom? No, but it's a living. Your NATCO teaches teenagers to fight when it still seems like a game. And look at you. You're a killing machine. JC only joined in his 20s. Who's the scary one, huh? Me or you? Well, considering your paunch, I'd say JC. <clears throat> the more of us you kill, the more that secessionism lives in the hearts of the people. Not if you can't pronounce it. Ever wonder why big car companies pay 2% tax while the guys on the assembly line pay 40? Corporations are so big you don't even know who you're working for. That's terror. Terror built into the system. Who's the scary one, huh? Me or you? Man, look at you. Got nothing to say except arguments against the system. Oh, an aug canister. I'll take it from here. Gonna have fun with that. And since I've got the skills to spare, let's boost up rifle. Yeah. Gonna need it if I want to treat my baby right. Also, yeah, every NSF agent that you don't deal with yourself is now replaced by a dead terrorist. Oh. And here's where Liberty's head fell. A shame, isn't it? The French terrorist group Silhouette claims that France was wrong to give the U.S. the statue. We think they planned the bombing. You know, that's funny. Earlier, J.C. said he thought the NSF did the bombing. And then the hobo guy, Philbin, he said... The government did it, so... Did no one take responsibility for this? 
I just think it's disrespectful to leave the lady decapitated like this and put her head on display. I mean, is remembering the wound really more important than the symbol itself here? I don't know how to answer that question. But I do know how to use these containers to get down the statue. This is the route we could have taken to get up. But like I said, it would have bypassed Gunther Herman, as we saw, and... You're a man of your word. I like that. Yeah, it's nice that Philbin has something to say. I better get my money on time. If you pop back here afterwards. You're a man of your word. I like that. Oh, and I almost forgot this crate here on my way through. Yeah, another lockpick. Another way to get past the doors without the key. You may have noticed the damage I've incurred. And I can also use this to get one of two augmentations for the arms. Now, for one, it's just... You can pick up and push heavier objects when it's active. And the other thing increases melee weapon damage. Now, a melee weapon damage build, perfectly functional, not the way I play the game personally. For me, it's always microfibral muscle. Now let's heal up and get moving. They sent us in to pick up the pieces. We've already searched the bodies and delivered the enemy munitions to the Quartermaster. Yeah, that's the game's explanation for why all of the dead bodies are empty when you find them. Minimum force won't work in the city. You better take some hardware. Dude, Kaplan, I'm trying to talk to my brother here. I'll check back with you later. Don't get in my way like that, okay? We've got the island secured. How did things look in the statue? The leader surrendered. So they were after Ambrosia. A month's supply for the East Coast. We think they've taken it back to the city. I didn't know Unatco handled the Ambrosia distribution. Manderley will brief us shortly. Unatco makes sure the limited supply of vaccine gets to government agencies and key industries. It's good to finally see some action. Just keep a level head. You're doing well so far. Now get inside. I'll meet you in Manderley's office, level two. Yep, man, that's your reward for finishing Liberty Island. Get inside. I'll meet you in Manderley's office. No kills. Paul is vaguely satisfied rather than kind of pissed off. So, what the hell is the Trilateral Commission anyway? Well, now you get to find out in today's Conspiracy Corner. The Facts The Trilateral Commission was formed in 1973 by David Rockefeller and... I'm gonna butcher this... Zbigniew Brzezinski both of whom knew each other thanks to their membership in the Council on Foreign Relations. The idea came out of an essay Brzezinski wrote in 1970 for the Foreign Affairs publication. In it, he noted that advancing technology and growing trade relations between the three regions of East Asia, North America, and Western Europe demanded a means of facilitating communication and trade agreements between the three regions. A trilateral commission, if you will. One major reason for the Commission's founding was specifically to bring Japan into the international community. So you might say it's ultimately responsible for why Japanese anime is everywhere these days. The members of the Commission are a specific number of individuals from several nations. Originally, it was only Japan, the United States, and Canada, and most nations in Western Europe. Since then, however, membership has expanded to include Mexico, Australia and New Zealand, Korea, mainland China and Taiwan, India, a number of other nations in Southeast Asia, and members of the former Communist bloc. Notably, Russia is missing from the roster, as are the other Russian Commonwealth nations. Member numbers are limited by nation and by region. Europe gets 160. North America has 120, and the Asia-Pacific region gets 110, for a grand total of 390. Membership is not limited based on general ideology. Politicians from both the left and the right have been part of the commission, including former U.S. presidents Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush, and Bill Clinton. 
Membership is strictly limited to those in the private sector, however. Those who enter public service abdicate their seats and can only regain them once they leave. Members are all chosen based on their positions, and I don't know what JC was talking about, because joining the Trilateral Commission is by invitation only. And those positions include the upper echelon of business, banking, media, academia, labor unions, and other NGOs. Current and past member lists are also freely available to the public. Some names you might recognize beyond the U.S. presidents are Paul Volkler and Alan Greenspan, both former Federal Reserve Chairman, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, Carter's Vice President Walter Mondale, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, and from the Obama administration there's Timothy Geithner, Susan Rice, General James L. Jones, James Steinberg, Dennis Ross, and Richard Holbrook. Although the Commission's biannual meetings are held in private, every speaker has the option of making his or her presentation public, and the Commission publishes trialogues, which are reports on the annual meetings every year. It also publishes triangle papers, which are written essays discussing current global issues and represent the author's views rather than those of the Commission at large. All of these documents are available either for free off their website or else for a few dollars from the Brookings Institute Press. The Conspiracy The Trilateral Commission drew conspiracy theorists right from the start thanks to being founded by a Rockefeller in the Council on Foreign Relations, which will have its own corner one day, don't you worry. Things only got worse when Jimmy Carter won the presidency in 1976 and staffed virtually all the top spots with trilateralists, including Brzezinski himself as a foreign relations advisor. After that, Ronald Reagan brought George Bush, a member, into the White House along with a few of Bush's friends. Clinton was a member at one point. Bush Jr. had a few thanks to his father's connections, and now Barack Obama, who was never a member but has his own connections, brought 11 commission members into the administration when he won the presidency in 2008. Now that kind of power networking would be enough to keep any conspiracy theorist busy, but the commission made things worse when it published a triangle report called The Crisis of Democracy in 1975, which criticized what it called the inefficiencies of democratic government in the face of growing populations and a steady stream of crises. Now, hey, remember how I said all this stuff was free and public? Uh, here's a quote. This combination of challenges seems to create a situation in which the needs for longer term and more broadly formulated purposes and priorities for a greater overall coherence of policy appear at the same time that the increasing complexity of the social order, increasing political pressures on government, and decreasing legitimacy of government make it more and more difficult for government to achieve these goals. The demands on democratic government grow, while the capacity of democratic government stagnates. This, it would appear, is the central dilemma of the governability of democracy, which has manifested itself in Europe, North America, and Japan in the 1970s. The paper goes on to call for a sort of intellectual despotism to maintain order and respond quickly to threats when a democratic government fails. Now, you first have to understand the context of this paper. The Vietnam War ended a miserable failure. Iran was falling to pieces. OPEC, that's the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or basically the Middle East plus Venezuela. OPEC had just artificially created the oil crisis of the mid-70s. Three Mile Island had just happened, and thanks to a very comprehensive scheme of lies, the USSR was projecting itself as doing far better economically than it really was, in the process making it seem like a viable alternative to democracy. Think like how people nowadays point to China as an example, as though its GDP growth meant it's doing something right, and not simply that it's catching up with an already industrialized nations. It was a pretty stupid paper, really, but it's understandable given the times, and it's also in character for Samuel P. Huntington, the American author and a rather vicious conservative. The crazy part, though, is that Dr. Huntington was also a part of the Carter administration 
on the National Security Council for a couple years and had a hand in creating FEMA. But I'll get back to that when FEMA's day in the corner comes. Oh, and here's one more thing. John Hinckley Jr., the man who almost killed Ronald Reagan, had a brother named Scott who was going to a dinner date with George Bush's son, Neil, the day after the assassination attempt. And their respective fathers were friends. Hinckley Sr. had contributed to Bush's primary run. Coincidence? Yeah, Hinckley had gone off the deep end years before, and he might have shot Carter if he'd worked up the nerve earlier. Personal thoughts. I don't consider the Trilateral Commission to be a conspiracy to create or run a secret world government, and I can give you two good reasons why. First, if there really is a world-spanning shadow government with absolute control over everything, it wouldn't need to be secret. I mean, what the hell could we do about it? All you have to do is take a quick look through history or... Hell, look behind you. You'll see what I mean. People with absolute power over nations will flaunt that shit. The Kim Dynasty, Stalin, Hitler, the last richest kings of France, the, the Caesars, the Pharaohs. Not only do they want you to know who's in charge, they want you to worship them with cults of personality, literal cults in the oldest cases. If we were ruled by one central group and there wasn't a damn thing we could do about it, trust me, they'd let us know. Second is a simple formula. The more intelligent, educated, and informed an individual becomes, the more likely it is that he or she will have a personal idea on how best to fix the world. Thus, when you fill a room with informed, educated, and intelligent people, the chances that all of them will agree on what to do are slim to none. You can illustrate this with dictatorships too. Dictators who take over by force and have little legitimacy. Much like how a shadowy cabal would have little legitimacy. They are threatened by other intelligent individuals who might happen to make up their own minds on what to do in a situation and take over themselves to see it through. Thus the dictator will purge everyone smart and close enough to overthrow him and instead surround himself with dunces who do what they're told. Maybe a handful could be trusted enough to survive, but certainly not 390. But then I wouldn't say the Trilateral Commission is harmless, either. Ultimately, it's a place for the rich, the educated, and the well-connected to go to pat each other on the back and trade favors. And as I'm sure we'll come to learn, Rich, educated, and well-connected people love to pat each other on the back and trade favors. But for instance, when Tim Geithner needed a company to take over Chrysler, he looked to Fiat, whose chairman, Luca de Montezemulo, was a federal trilateral member at the time. This sort of favor trading runs counter to honest competition, but it happens all the time. It's really just an unavoidable part of human nature. After all, if we didn't make friends and help each other out, we'd never have made it this far. Thanks for joining me again in Conspiracy Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.